All right, I know you guys wanted it. USB killer versus Tesla. Let's see what happens while driving 70 miles an hour. You guys asked for it, I'm here to deliver. <laughs> Okay, not really, but guys, I wanted a change of scenery, um, just something different, because I kind of wanted to talk about an update Elon just released for the Tesla, but also a few little pieces of Apple news I wanted to throw in there. So let's just do it, something different. I'll show you my garage, I'm cleaning it up, setting it up uh, for the review. Guys, I'm, <laughs> I'm hyping it so much, but I hope it's gonna be as good as I'm making it because I'm putting this thing through its paces and it's blowing my mind more and more every single day. So anyways, let's get to it. All right, hopefully the audio is better now. Um, I want to start with the Apple Smart battery case. So we learned about that a little bit earlier, what it looks like, we rendered it up for you. Now Appleosophy has actually gotten an inside look at the release schedule of some merchandise from Apple for retailers, and they saw the Apple Smart battery case there in two sizes, the 10S and 10S Max. What's even more interesting is that they saw that it has a leather option, but 9 to 5 Mag is saying that that's most likely false. It was just placed in the wrong category, although a leather smart battery case would not be a bad idea. That would be pretty cool. So this thing could be coming out very, very soon. Fall technically ends on December 21st. So there's a little bit of time for Apple to release that. I highly doubt they will since there's no mention of it, but I would like them to. I definitely want this case in my life. And hopefully it does have the wireless charging that was rumored separately in a patent. We re-rendered the case with a built-in wireless charging module. Not that you guys can really tell, but it definitely is there. And it's not a functionality that Apple can't add. You know, it's certainly possible and they should do it if they weren't already. Also something I wanted to mention is, is it still possible for AirPods 2, AirPower, and the smart battery case to all release by the end of this year? I mean, what we've got a couple weeks to go here, it is highly, highly unlikely that that would happen, but it's not impossible. Apple released the original AirPods exactly two years ago in December, so it's not like it's a release schedule that they can't follow. And tying this in, several people actually asked me about AirPods 2 and whether or not they should hold off on buying AirPods right now, like as a Christmas gift or something. I certainly would wait, and that's just me. Early 2019 at most would be like three months. We're just so close, it would hurt for you to buy some AirPods right now and then them to come out in a few months, but it's, it's really your choice. If you can get a good deal on them, like 145 bucks, I think is the best deal I've seen on like eBay and stuff, then yeah, get them now. But if you can wait, early 2019 is probably when they're gonna be released. So yesterday, iOS 12.1.2 released. Unfortunately, Qualcomm is not satisfied with the changes that Apple has implemented. They say that Apple is still infringing on their patents with iOS 12.1.2, even though we don't really know what Apple did, if they removed any functionality, if they have adjusted anything, we don't know that. Qualcomm is saying that the changes were not significant enough and Apple is still infringing. So that could mean that Apple could update that through another software update, an emergency one, maybe 12.1.3, maybe roll it into 12.2, but this is a huge problem for Apple. If they're unable to sell their iPhones in China, then they're gonna lose out on a lot of money, obviously, so they wanna fix that. I would expect an imminent release for a software update. Either way, I'm pretty sure Apple was planning on 12.2 because around this time last year, we were almost on iOS 11.3, so I guess they're a little behind on that schedule and truthfully, man, there have been like no, no significant, no cool updates from Apple in the longest time. And that's a bit of a bummer because they used to surprise us all the time. Um, I would like to see something exciting. And the reason I'm even throwing this part in, in this video is just because in updates for a car is way more exciting than updates I get on my phone, which I consider the coolest gadget ever. So I wanted to show you those here in just a second. Also, iOS 12.1 is no longer being signed. If you are on 12.1, stay there because that's most likely where the jailbreak will come out, 12.1 or below. If you're on 12.0.1, I mean, stay there. Obviously, you can't get to 12.1 right now. So the jailbreak is imminent. It will be coming out here soon. It's been all but confirmed that all the pieces are there. Just the work needs to be put into place. All right, let me show you the garage. And then we'll jump inside the Tesla. Um, made some exciting changes. So I've been living in this house for a little bit over a year now and I'm really slow procrastinator to like update things, uh, the styling and whatnot. So I've just been doing the garage mostly. The house is still like empty and I'll, I'll show you here. All right, so just set up this corner here. Got some uh, mounts basically to hold some stuff up. And that is the Elon corner over there. So I've got my flamethrower, his apology letter, which he signed it personally, but <laughs> basically so I can buy more propane because he wasn't able to ship it with it. You know, the weirdest thing about this gun is that this magazine fits in here. This is a real AR-15 magazine and it has a perfect cutout for it. It snaps into place. You can't pull the trigger when it's in there, 
but I'm just confused. Why did he make it like that? Like, is this a 3D printed gun that was converted to a flamethrower? Because inside you can kind of see like, it could theoretically be made to shoot. It has like this setting over here. I don't know, it's just some thoughts, but I thought that was funny that you can fit an actual magazine in there. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Here is this baby. I actually got it like maybe a month before the Tesla Model 3. And it's also an M3, not Model 3, but technically both M3s. Uh, they couldn't be more different, but I love them so much in their own ways. This car is like, the best handling I've ever, ever felt. And I have, you know, that, that bad boy over there in terms of pure speed over there, but like handling the competition package M3 E46, there is no, no competition with this one. And especially for the price, you know, I think I got it all together for like 15, 16 grand and they're slowly going up in value. I mean, I've seen them as high as like 30 to 35 grand for perfect examples. Anyways, this is the one I wanted to talk about. So uh, today I got an update. It's the 2018 48.1.2 update and it gives you some cool changes. Does my butt really look that big to you? Oh my gosh. My uh, Netflix started playing the most convenient thing right now. All right. Anyways, I'd like to show you those. So going into the Tesla menu here, pulling down the drawer and we have Easter eggs. So in this latest update, he added a couple. I like this one a lot. It's a romance mode. It enables, <laughs> it basically blasts the heat, turns this on in a sound. It's only enabled in park, so you can't like drive around with this, but thought it was pretty cool. And it plays, you know, this. Nice. A tornado and then we've got the emissions testing mode. <laughs> oh my gosh, like, Elon, thank you. Thank you for doing the randomest things. It's it's so funny, but you can prank your passengers and yes, <laughs> there's like lots of different ones over here. Let's try the boring part. <laughs> this is so, I don't even know the word for it. It's It's cool. Anyways, so you can do it on a turn signal or on the demands, but I think that it should be at random, like when someone's sitting in a seat. Man, I actually, I have a list of over 40, 50 suggestions for Tesla uh, after driving this car for a couple weeks. There's so many little tweaks that, ca that can be adjusted through software. Uh, you know, like a, a wish list for Tesla. You know, the video games did exist here before, so there's some cool uh, Atari ones, but he's actually added support for controller support. And we're gonna try that out and actually just install the wireless charger here. It's pretty cool. And let's go ahead and plug in a PS4 controller, see if that works. I'm pretty sure it's only for Xbox, although it's unknown. All right, so I've got a PS4 controller. Let's see if I can play some video games through this on my Tesla. So this is the new game, Pole Position, he released today. And I don't think I can get my PlayStation controller to work with it. I guess we gotta do it with the steering wheel. How cool is this, guys? Like, honestly, Something I never thought I'd be doing in my life, playing video games on my car. <laughs> and uh, Tesla, Elon went as far as to try and get Mario Kart on here, but Nintendo wouldn't license it to them. I thought that was really funny. All right, let's give this another try. Very, very gentle adjustments here, all right. But yeah, there's that, pretty dang cool. And by far, my favorite thing about the Model 3 is, or Tesla in general, is that this car, what it is today is not what it'll be tomorrow. This car is going to be so different. It's going to have different features, different functionality. The interface might look different. Things might behave in a different way because this car was built ground up for software updates. Most cars like this one probably has, what, 40, 50 plus control modules. They're all separate. When it gets an update, if it gets an update, it'll just be for the infotainment system. This can control everything because there's three modules that are controlling everything on the car. They've, they've slimmed it down engineering wise. It's beautiful <laughs> into three main controllers and that's why it's so updatable. And that's like what most car manufacturers don't understand is like as a young buyer, that's what I want out of a car. I mean, one of the things anyways, and they, they don't care. I have a glitch on my R8 where in the virtual cockpit, it'll freeze on uh, one of the clusters with the sound. It's the MMI, so it's basically one huge uh, display where your odometer would be. 
and basically freezes on the sound settings. And I went in for an update. They said no update available. You'll need to reproduce the issue. And I couldn't at the moment, of course, as always, uh, to fix it. You know, Tesla, Tesla would have a service guy over in my house, you know, in a couple days or so to fix that or through a software update. So you can definitely see there's a huge shift in the way that car companies are doing things nowadays and software is everything. That's like my favorite thing here. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, let me put this over here. Just a quick little update for you. Just wanted to share that with you as well. Something that actually gets me so fired up and passionate because combining cars with technology, how have I, how have I not got a Tesla before? That's literally the best thing I've ever had. Um, but anyways, I'll get that review out for you guys relatively soon. Thanks for watching. Just a little update for you.